Good afternoon, folks, and we are back again. We apologize. We have some problems. We're not live on Facebook. We're live on Facebook, not on YouTube right now. We have a problem with the dual system. We apologize for that. It'll be live on our website, GabrielHamus.com, the broadcast that is, and on YouTube after the broadcast, and we'll see if we can have this problem fixed. Thank you for your patience and welcome. Thank you, Lord, for ministering to God's people today. Thank you for every hungry person, every hungry soul that will be watching this broadcast at any time. We thank you for the mighty and awesome work that you do, precious Holy Spirit, to bring life to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and those who are hungry and ready and prepare themselves for what God is doing in this final hour. Thank you, precious Lord. I want to talk to you today concerning what I entitle Last Call for the Remnant. Last call for the remnant, and we'll, of course, explain this properly. Hallelujah. Last call for the remnant. I want to mention three things to you, and then I want to talk about three requirements, three very pertinent requirements that um, is going to be required for us, for anybody to become a remnant. Now, let me just say this here. Here's the first thing I want to say this. You know, Paul talks about the fact that in his ministry, people referred to him as being mad, madness, having madness in what he was preaching and the knowledge and the revelation and so on. And really, I want to just take a moment and talk to you, especially if you've been watching our broadcast for several years, even more so if you have been a part of our ministry for many years, because a lot of things will even make sense, which is good, and will fall into place so to speak, and to help people to understand more so, particularly and specifically what we are talking about. What do we mean when we say last call for the remnant? This is the last call for the remnant. Now, first thing is this. What we are doing as a ministry is considered madness. It is considered madness by who? Well, by everybody, including me. What we are doing as a ministry has never been done before. We're going to back up just a few years now and so on, back to 2017, when the Lord said to me, it is time to sit down. It is time for me to give you the detailed end time plan of what we call God's end time gold and glory revolution. His whole end time plan for the outpouring of the Spirit, the reaping of the last day end time harvest, and the coming of the Lord. Of course, the Lord put that together for us. There was a lot of work that needed to be done. It took uh, three years for us to get this all done and ready for you. And it's called God's Gold and Glory Revolution. Most of you are familiar with this. I pray that you're reading this. I pray that you would read this with the help of Holy Spirit. I pray that you would read this again, two, three, four different times, at least, you know, in a year's time. And we're doing the same. It's amazing, even though this was written, you know, through me. Uh, it, I go back and look at it sometimes and I, I'm, I'm almost like I'm, I'm looking at a book that somebody else wrote, which really the Spirit of God did. And so this is the blueprint. This is the end time plan of the Lord. Um, not all of it is so much, but in rather in some detail to help us, to show us what is coming. This is the climax of the ages. This is especially since 2017, when the last generation of the church turned 70 years since 1947, and officially the last generation of this dispensation of the church began officially, if you would, with Israel's independence on Friday, May the 14th, 1948. We've talked about that so much. But what we are doing and what we have been doing since 2017 is really, it's a madness. It's almost crazy. Now, a lot of good and powerful revelatory truth about the Lord and about the Word and about the New Testament uh, have been steadily flowing to the church, you know, for over a hundred years. And yet the, the system itself, the lifestyle and the system of Christianity itself has never been examined by the church. Uh, there's never been a time that the church would say, let's take a close look or a second look at everything that we preach, everything we say, everything we proclaim, everything we have written down in our, uh, the creed of our doctrine, everything that we, that we do practically. Let's look at the whole lifestyle 
of Christianity. That is all the, the truth and the knowledge that we preach as well as the practical side of how we live it on a day-to-day -day basis and examine it closely. On the other hand, let me go back for a moment to um, when I began the full-time ministry, April 22nd, 1983, next year will be 40 years. Of course, many of you know, and also in the introduction of the Golden Glory book, I talk about the encounter which I had with Holy Spirit on Saturday early morning hours of Saturday, September 22nd, 1979, where my whole life changed. By the time I entered the full-time ministry, of course, Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit relationship which is really true Christianity based on John 14 through 17, what Jesus said that he's going away. He's going back to the father and he did so yet. He would send us in his place, the person, not anointing the person more than anointing the person of Holy Spirit himself to live in a life of relationship with him. That is Christianity. Salvation comes through and came through the Lord Jesus Christ, the Christian life, comes through the person of Holy Spirit. That's what Jesus was saying. And so I began to preach what I called Holy Spirit Christianity versus what the church was practicing at large, which I refer to as religious Christianity. Now, this I did and, and this I preached from the beginning of my, my full time ministry. And throughout all these years, I have tried my best to say to people, especially during the revival years in the 90s, People were more open to God. Holy Spirit was being poured out everywhere. And I would say, and, and as I said many times before in the morning services, I would teach on what we now call true Christianity. I called it Holy Spirit Christianity versus religious or church Christianity. And would show people how that there has to come after salvation, even after the baptism of the Spirit. Then there has to come a time of a personal embracing of Holy Spirit, which will lead to an encounter with him. And from that point on, once you have had an encounter with the Spirit of God, we can talk about that some more today, then you will begin to live Christianity out of the source of his life and his person. You see, we think that we're supposed to live Christianity out of the word. But you live Christianity out of Holy Spirit, who then takes you to the word and then teaches you the revelation of the word. We've always had it wrong. So for many years, I preached Holy Spirit Christianity during the revival days. A lot of people became interested because their lives were changed by the outpouring. There were signs and wonders and miracles taking place and people's lives were changed. And I would teach them and say, this is because God is pouring out Holy Spirit in anointing and power and in rain and so on and refreshing and joy and laughter and so on. But he is the person, the third person of God. And then at that time, as I said, people became interested in him as a person to some degree. Some people never did and began to follow the teachings that I was giving concerning how to discover him and how to develop a personal relationship with him which is real, what real Christianity or true Christianity is. So in a sense, when we talk about true Christianity, we've changed the terminology here because something happened after 2017 slowly and then eventually after 2020. Initially, from, from my encounter with Holy Spirit, I received at that time revelation of who he is as a person by meeting him and how to present him to the church as an alternative form of Christianity, which is really the true form of Christianity, living and fellowshipping with, with him on a daily basis, called it Holy Spirit Christianity. But then the part that we were lacking until after 2020, when the Lord began to open our eyes, was on the other side. You see, we, re we received more revelation from 2017 onwards about everything about the Lord, including Holy Spirit. However, the part we were lacking was on the other side, the exposure of and exposing of who is behind the system. How does what is religious Christianity really? And then we found out from the Lord that it was the Antichrist spirit. And then uh, the Lord said to me, I want you to go, go back in history and look at that time. In the, in the history of the church, because we were looking in 1 John chapter 1 and then chapter 2, verse 18 and verses 22 and, 
and uh, chapter 4, verse 3, and then 2 John 1, 7. There are four times that John says, be careful, this Antichrist spirit is on his way to you. He's coming to the church. And that, that woke me up. And I began to say to the Lord, all right, if he was on his way to the church at that time, then I need to look into this closer. And so I went back to history and look at what happened then according to history. And then you see that, um, that as you look back into this, uh, clearly how that this spirit came and attacked the church was deception. The war of deception. The war of deception takes place without anybody knowing it. Because it's deception. Nobody saw it. Nobody recognized it. This spirit just presented himself to the church as the true Jesus. And of course, as we've said many times, the church, even from the beginning, refused to accept the fact that Jesus did not lie as is preached all the way throughout or, or, or suggested or insinuated throughout the whole Christian world. The whole Christian church world embraces Jesus as if he's on the earth, suggesting that he was lying. You see, we, we, we never in the church will always preach one thing and then never draw the line all the way through to see the full truth except of, except of half a truth. If Jesus is on the earth today, if Jesus is in your heart, if Jesus is everywhere in the church, like the Christian community of the world tells you, then that would make Jesus a liar because he said clearly, I will return to the Father. He ascended from the Mount of Olives. 40 days after his resurrection. It was Thursday, May the 22nd of the year uh, 32. He ascended from the Mount of Olives. That is truth. That is biblical, historical truth. He sat down at the right hand of the Father. And 22 verses in the New Testament confirm to us that he did sit down at the right hand of the Father. He has been sitting there ever since he returned. So if you preach the... Uh, what we call Antichrist Christianity, that Jesus is on the earth. You're calling Jesus a liar. Now, many of you know about this, these books, True Christianity. I think for any Christian who says, where have we gone wrong? What is the root of the problem? Where did everything fall apart? How can I quickly find knowledge and truth and revelation to get me out of deception, to show me the deception, get me out of the deception, get me over into truth, and turn my whole life around, it would be this book, True Christianity. And I tell you what is so amazing. People always say, you know, why do you sell things? And so the Lord said to me, do not give these books away. Sell them. People need to appreciate and use them. I mean, for the price of what? Even a large or medium-sized pizza, you can have this. And you can read this and it will change. I promise you, if you, before you read it, say, Holy Spirit, please talk to me, Lord. It will absolutely, he will open your eyes. It will change your life. Turn your life around. Even if that's the only one of these books that you get. By the way, we have on YouTube and my tube and everybody's tube, we have over, by now we must have over 700 videos since 2012. You know, <laughs> if not, if you look at all the videos that are out there, and I know my wife's looking at me and smiling and so on, we don't know. But there is, at one time we had over 500 I believe there's over 700 videos. There's never a video or a video recording that we've made since 2012 that we that we charge any money for. Of what we present in our ministry, probably 85 or 90 percent of it is free. So these books are just amazing because the Lord can use them. You can use them. It can change your life. And the time to do so has become very, very critical. So in a nutshell, what we are doing has never been done before. Yes, there was the attack and the rise against the Roman Catholic Church, starting with Martin Luther on Saturday, October 31st of 1517. Yes, and of course the Reformation, and then several awakenings that came through time altogether, five awakenings of revival, and every great revival, or every international or global awakening that touched the church did change the church, and progress was made. But really, the church, except for the ministry of Catherine Coleman and Benny Hinn, Brother Hagen and a few others, the church never really heard enough about how to live the Christian life, what we call now true Christianity. But then the Lord exposed to us 
this whole system. All the years that I was preaching Holy Spirit Christianity, I understood what true Christianity is and how to live that through Holy Spirit. Like I said, it's the exposure side that we didn't see until 2021. And thank God for it. Hallelujah. And so that's why we could write the book, True Christianity, to sh expose to you what false or antichrist Christianity is, how the antichrist spirit came in and all that, and how that Holy Spirit will help you. He lives in you. If you are truly born again, God, by His Spirit, the third person of God, of the Godhead, lives in your spirit. In most Christians' lives, for 20, 30, 40 years or more, after they're born again, there is a spiritual dormancy. They never reach into their spirit. They never learn how to activate their human spirit. It's born again. The Holy Spirit lives in there. They never learn how to fellowship with Holy Spirit. And they never learn how to live the Christian life. You know, it's always we always romanticize everything in the Christian world. You know, when you go to heaven, there's all the angels bowing down and worship. And Jesus stands there with crowns and welcomes you and, and all your family are screaming and shouting and everything. And the truth is really a lot different than that. Because most Christians, when they get to the pearly gate, they look at, remember, Holy Spirit is omnipresent. Remember, John says, there, there are three in heaven that bear a record or witness, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. And on the earth is the water, the blood, and the Spirit. You say, but there's the Spirit again, because He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. When you get to the pearly gate, there's not only Jesus standing there. There's Holy Spirit standing there. And I'm telling you, it's, it's so sad. It, I, I'm saying this again because I wish I could change it, but only the people who hear me can. People, when they get to the pearly gate, there's not a great big party. First thing you have to do is you are confronted with the Lord Jesus Christ. And in Revelation chapter 2, he's called the one, the Lord that has fire in his eyes. And Holy Spirit is standing there saying, oh, remember me? No, you don't. Okay. I am Holy Spirit. You ignored me for 45 years living in your spirit since you were born again. And Jesus here told you to live and walk every day with me. Why didn't you ever pay any attention to me? These are realities. Like I say, everything is so always, you know, fluffy, fluffy cloud pie in the sky and, and all this kind of hogwash. Heaven is a place of reality. Heaven is not a cloud. You're floating on a cloud somewhere and you know, the angels are playing their harps and they change their diapers and all the kind of garbage that the, the, the religious world is, is telling you. It's reality. When you get to the pearly gate, you will be confronted by the Lord Jesus Christ. And you will be confronted by God, the Holy Spirit, who lives in your spirit. And as I've just said a moment ago, here is the reality. People want to talk about reality. You want reality? This is reality. 90 plus percent, probably 95 percent, but I'll be nice about it today. Probably 90 percent or more of Christians who get to the pearly gate are embarrassed by Holy Spirit meeting them and say, by the way, why did you ignore me for 45 years since you were born again? These are realities that we have to deal with. Jesus stands there with fire in his eyes and say, why did you blaspheme me? Why did you accuse me of being a liar? Why did you listen to the lying antichrist spirit that controls the church and say that I live in you? When you, when the 22 scriptures, did you ever hear and read any scriptures that confirm that I did ascend from the Mount of Olives and that all this time for 2000 years, I had been sitting on the right hand of the father in my glory, in my position of authority and king of kings and lord of lords, and you try to keep me on the earth as some Jesus floating around somewhere. It's blasphemy. As I said, we explain this in the True Christianity book. It's blasphemy what's happening. And I just the other day I was listening to somebody and they were praying and said, Lord, we pray for an open heaven. I thought, well, why don't you just get born again? Hello, you want an open heaven? Get born again. Lord, we pray that we may stand. We, we pray that we may stand before the court of heaven. Are you crazy? When you are born again, truly born again, you are seated in Christ Jesus at the right hand of the Father. You don't have to pray for no open heaven. It's open. Hallelujah. Paul says clearly, remind me of Hebrews 4, 16. He says, he says, therefore, let us come boldly. Let us come boldly to the throne room of grace. To the throne room of grace. He didn't say you have to set a court appointment. Hello? And try and get some court hearing. Hello? Let us come boldly to the throne of grace. 
that may obtain grace and help in time of need. Let us come boldly. If heaven is not open, you need to get born again. If you want to try and get into the throne room, get born again. If you're born again, you're in Christ Jesus at the right hand of the Father. All this hogwash and all this garbage keeps going on, going on all the time until the fire of God will soon consume it all. So many people are praying for revival. You need to pray for people to have their eyes open to the truth and start repenting because the fire is coming. And it's like we said and explained to you, the first outpouring of the fire is judgment. You, you all want to have revival. You're not going to have revival. There's no revival coming. There's fire coming. The first fire is judgment. The second fire outpouring is the cleansing and purifying of the, of the church, which is a shocking but amazing event that's about to take place. Now, <coughs> excuse me, back to what I was saying. So we have been doing this, but, but it's crazy. We are the first ministry. Now, I don't know about other ministries. Why are they not doing it? Well, mainly because they're not closely connected with Holy Spirit. They may not called to, to, um, to preach the message. They, they may not called to do exactly what we are doing. But if a minister is truly connected with the Spirit of God and walking with Him, they will hear and would have, especially since 2017, would have heard Holy Spirit say, folks, this is 70 years. We're in the final stretch of 10 years. It's time to wake up. It's time to repent of this, of this, of this, of this, of this, of this. Because there's no way that the Spirit of God would not show the church what's about to happen. If the church inquires, the leadership, the church inquires of him. So I don't know all about other ministries. I know what God said to me many years ago and kept telling me, you're responsible for this. And of course, that's why we're so popular. That's why thousands of people watch us. That's why we're invited to so many churches every day. Every, we don't know where to go. No, of course not. Because we obey God. We are a ministry that will not please people. Yes, we're going to offend people. Yes, we're going to make people mad. I did that back in the 90s in the great revival days. People still got mad under the anointing because you preach the truth and you come against the religious spirits or antichrist spirits that are within their brain or control their brain and control their life. And churches are controlled the same way. So in a sense, for those of you who have been with this ministry many years, and for those of you who have even walked with us since 2017 or 20 or so, you know and understand what we're doing. We're doing something that is really madness in a sense. There's no other ministry on the face of the earth. Like I said, I don't know who else God said uh, or ministry or ministers told them to do this and they're not doing it. At least the ones that I know and can see, they're not doing it. But the Lord said to me, run with us, begin to show the truth about the Antichrist system and some which we did in, in the book, True Christianity. And of course, in our broadcast, we have covered this over and over and over and over and over and over. But time is running out. Time is running short. So I understand sometimes if people are stunned and they're shocked because we preach a different gospel. We do not preach a different Jesus. We preach the same Jesus. We pre preach a different location for Jesus. Absolutely. We preach the truth that he is seated at the right hand of the Father. We preach a different message of God's Holy Spirit as a person because in the church, he is considered some, something passive and something to be ignored and pushed into the corner. Why? Because the Antichrist spirit rules the church. And first thing he wants you to do is get rid of Holy Spirit so he can control you. And so Holy Spirit sits dormant. And in this place of dormancy inside born again human spirits for the rest of the person's natural life. And then they go to heaven and they're shocked when they get to the pearly gate. So I understand what we have been doing, what we've brought you is, is unbelievably shocking and different. This is the first time, this ministry. I'm not bragging on us. I'm bragging on the Lord. And I'm bragging on the every, everything is given me and shown me and revealed to me and giving me the guts, giving me the, the, the boldness, uh, giving me uh, um, the desire to obey him and to bring this. It's so much easier 
to preach just some kind of happy Pentecostal message. You know, we all just Ronda Shonda in tongues and hallelujah, you interpret and so on. And oh, we just have happy time and so on. Nothing changes and we're still controlled by the Antichrist spirit and we're still miserable and our destiny is still in jeopardy and the last days are upon us and we're unprepared and we are in a place of difficulty and we're going to miss it, you see. But the Lord said to me, obey me, bring the truth, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it. And in that sense, we are the only ministry that I know of, and I know there's other ministries relating to us that are doing the same. I'm talking about, you know, as, an, as a starter ministry, as a, as a apostolic ministry, as a beginner, as initiating from this. And that's why we wrote these four books with the help and anointing of Holy Spirit, because they're, they're breathed by Holy Spirit. <clears throat> they're given by Holy Spirit. <clears throat> so I understand the uh, incredible, almost craziness of what we are doing. It is the first time in 2000 years that the entire system of Christianity has been challenged, questioned, and then exposed as the Lord exposed to us the whole working and control of the Antichrist spirit. Again, in the true Christianity book, chapters one and two, we explain all of this. We explain it and we verify it biblically and we confirm it. Even historically, it's all in there and show you exactly how the system is taken over by the spirit, how all the doctrines, all the practices, all of the uh, practical Christianity or Christian life has been controlled. Everything has been controlled by the Antichrist spirit and his demons. And so, so, and then we began to say, of course, all the years while I was on the road, I was teaching the basic message of Holy Spirit Christianity, which is true Christianity. As I've said what is added to this is the fact that we see the other side, all of the exposure and everything that comes along with that as well. So now, so I understand this. I understand it is, it is um, making a change of something the church has never done. Finally get to the point. Stop. Let's look at what we're doing. Let's examine it. Let's see what God is saying. And so we are preaching a different gospel. We're preaching the gospel that Paul preached. That is not the gospel the church preaches today. We're preaching the New Testament Christian life that Jesus introduced, that he spoke of, walking and living with Holy Spirit. That is not the gospel that the church preaches today. And so we know people you know, are shocked. I remember even in the revival years that sometimes people would say, wow, you preach very differently. I said, yeah, I preach a different gospel. And so one person said, that's right. You preach a different gospel. One time a fellow came up to me after the service said, can I see, can I see your Bible? So it was a morning service and I was teaching a course on Holy Spirit and how to live the Christian life with Holy Spirit. So he looked at the scriptures and everything. He said, wow, it is really in here. He didn't have his Bible that morning. He said, what you say is really in here. Why don't we do it in the church? This is correct. This is right. What you're saying, what you're doing. I said, well, because the church is in a system of religious Christianity controlled by demons. Now we know it's the Antichrist spirit and so on. So I understand when we talk about true Christianity, when we talk about Holy Spirit making the changes. And again, the true Christianity in the last chapter, the ninth chapter, the Lord said to me, give people some guidelines. It's not a law. It's not a religion. It's not a mythology. Give people some guidelines of how they can get. Once you see the Antichrist system and then in chapters five to eight, you see the four principles and how true Christianity really works and what it really is. And then once you work through that and absorb that and have the desire to change, then before you put that book down, there is chapter nine guidelines on how to change, how to get out of. And I know this is revolutionary, people. It is revolutionary for those who would do so. The time is now getting extremely short to do so. And so today's message is a last call for the remnant. What do you mean by that? Last call for all those Christians who want to join the remnant army of God and have not done so yet. What do you mean done so? You have to do things. And I'm going to make a summary here of three things in a minute. But I understand the difficulty. I understand the challenge, even the shock that some of you might have gone through when you first begin to hear the truth. Because the true gospel of the New Testament has not been preached. Certain truths have been preached. 
Certain revelations have come, but the whole system of Antichrist Christianity and all of its lies and control and how it attacks true Christianity, how it blasphemes Jesus and how it ignores Holy Spirit. I know all of this came to a lot of you even as a shock, but it is now time to wrap things up. It's now time to bring things together. It's been over two years now since we've really gone after Antichrist Christianity. We brought true Christianity, preached it, printed it, promoted it, prophesied it. Hallelujah. It's time for us now to act. And some of you, of course, have. Many of you have acted on this. Many of you just got mad. You, you get, when you see error, when you see error and you see that because of this wrong system that you've been controlled by all your life by Antichrist spirit, you've missed out on many things in your life and even your destiny is in jeopardy. When you really begin to see that, when God opens your eyes, you will begin, be, begin to get angry and you'll start hating the system. Not the people, not the preachers, not the Christians, but the system of Antichrist Christianity that rules the church till this day 100%. You will get mad, you will get angry and you will begin to say, glory to God. I, I, I'm getting out of this in Jesus name, even if this is the last thing that I do in my life to get out of the Antichrist system of Christianity, which has been practiced by the church worldwide for 2000 years. I'm getting out of it and I'm moving into true Christianity and I'm going to follow and fellowship with Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm making the change. You cannot get angry until you see the lie. Holy Spirit expose the lie to your people. Let them see it. Let them see the lie of the whole system and the Antichrist spirit and these demons. So once you see it, you'll get angry. When you get angry, you'll come to action. It's amazing. We don't change. We don't shake off bad things. We don't get rid of bad things until we get angry. When you get angry and say, dear God, I am done. I'm done with the Antichrist demon uh, impersonating Jesus posing as Jesus, controlling me all these years, and they're telling me Jesus is in the church every Sunday, and he's in my heart. Here he is. We welcome him in the service. Bull trash. He's at the right hand of the Father. I'm done with all of this garbage and being under the control of the Antichrist spirit. Think about this. For 2,000, almost 2,000 years, since AD, the year 90, since the year 90, the church has been under the control of the Antichrist spirit. It's just shocking. It's just shocking. So I understand what we do is, is totally revolutionary, but it's time to really get a hold of it. I know many of you have, many of you have changed. You have become true remnant. But today I want to suggest you in a moment, uh, three, among other things, but three very, very vitally important things that you have to act on to join the remnant. Now, many have been listening and hearing and some have been reading the books. It is time to act if you have not done so. Time is running out. The Lord said to me, I want you to go on the air and say to Christians, listen, there's still time to come in. Now, many of you have walked with us over the last two years. You've gone through a lot of revelation and truth and a lot of training. You've received a lot of truth ever since we published God's Golden Glory Revolution on Friday, May 22nd, 2020. The Lord has been teaching and preaching. and We've been preaching and brought revelation and truth and life. It's, it's this amazing. We start out here next thing. Two hours are gone on a broadcast because there's so much. But in 2000 years, very little truth has come forth, especially about the Christian lifestyle. And what we believe, there is so much to cover. And we have experienced, and you along with us, many of you, have experienced. We start one thing, and the Lord move us into the next thing, and then the next thing, and the next thing. And time is getting shorter. Over the last two years, has been such a compact, condensed, I mean, almost jammed together uh, a, a, a training manual that was, that, was, that was coming from the Lord across to you on the air. It's just amazing, one thing after the other, after the other. But it won't be enough. If you do not follow up with the books, with the Lord and so on, we'll talk about that some more. So first of all, I understand the radical nature and the revolutionary uh, uh, existence of, of everything we bring to you in this ministry. 
So and I, it may still be a shock to some of you in your mind and your system. You cannot believe that all your life you've been born again, spiritual and so on. And, and you've heard the voice of God a few times, but the whole system is corrupt. It's of the Antichrist. And we prove it consistently over and over and have done so on the broadcast, of course. Number two, real quickly here, you must understand everything and interpret everything in the light of the urgency of the time. We talked about that over and over and over. We are in the final years of the final generation of the church era. And also remember, everything is related to time. We talked about the judgment. We, we, we majored on talking about the judgment and spelling it out. The Lord said, do it, do it, do it, do it. Hardest message I've ever preached in my life. Nothing's ever been this hard, this difficult. But we did it. We obeyed until October 16th. A few weeks ago, the Lord said, wrap it up, tie it down. That is it. And so if I think back over the years, next year, be 40 years of ministry, and I was thinking about this and processing through some of this. Of course, I cannot give you an exact number, but I have preached over 40 years, at least 20, 20 plus thousand messages, preached, taught everything over all these years, talking about Holy Spirit, walking with Holy Spirit in Holy Spirit Christianity, what we now call true Christianity. Just amazing. And also remember this. Now the time is running out. Time is running out. And remember 1 Peter 4, 17. The time has come for judgment to start at the house of God. So there may not be any other indication that judgment is about to start. But the time. Time is always the major factor in the prophetic plans and purposes of God. And so the Lord really bore down on me and said, okay, let's just, let's just camp right here, so to speak. Let's put up your tent, judgment tent, and talk about it, speak about it. Listen to me. Let me speak. Let me warn. Let me. And, and we've gone through all of this because the time is running out and this is about to start. And then so right in along with that, the, the first thing is this is a reality. When you look at the warnings of God this morning, I was going through Revelation chapter two and three and just being shocked again reading there. Remember, I made the statement last week that the, the judgments of God are not dispensational. The judgments of God it does well. We're in the church now, and this is what the church always preaches. Oh, well, there's no judgment because we run with the Lord and everything is fine and so on. Well, and of course, in the fire book, we show you that that is not so. And this is why we wrote the fire book. The Lord said, write this down, explain this to people. Of course, we did so in detail in the fire book. Not a thick book, but 90, 90 odd pages. But shows you exactly what is happening, what is coming next. God's seven point in time plan including the three different outpourings of fire. The first one, the fire of judgment on the church. The second one, the fire of cleansing and purification of the church. The third one, the fire of revival and the harvest of the nations of the world. We explain all that in the fire book, the global outpouring of God's fire. These things are all available. All these books, that is, are available on our website, GabrielHamans.com. Maybe you can get a book for somebody. Talk to some people. You've got to talk to some people. I know most Christians don't want to hear anything because they're so bound. They're so happy with this system. They're so blinded. They so have such a veil on their faces. Everything is just so amazing. But when I looked at the seven churches again this morning, the judgments that God spoke there, I'm telling you, these are, these are the strong, strong judgments. One of the churches, he just said, well, you know what? You are dead. That's what he said. He said, you are dead. Of course, we know about the church of the Laodicea when he said, you're lukewarm and I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Now, what you may not know is that all those seven prophecies to those seven churches in Asia Minor were put together and arranged in a book. I didn't know that until some time ago. I began to really look into it. And this book was sent across whole of Asia. I mean, all the way back to Rome, this book with all the seven prophecies, it was, it was sent, first of all, to all the churches. So when they got it, they didn't just get one prophecy. They have it together. They, they got it together, received it together like we have it today in, in the book of Revelation, all seven together. And all seven of them were, were put in this one book. So not only were they able to read the prophetic word to their church, but also learn things from the other six churches. And what the prophecies that God spoke to the other six churches and only one of the seven passed the test, the church of Philadelphia. Now, this is, you're talking about the year 95. 
This is like 62, 63 years after the church was born in Jerusalem. It's not even, a full, at that time, it was not even, not even a full generation of 70 years of the church had expired, or transpired, excuse me, had transpired, and the church was already in a place of spiritual death. This Antichrist spirit had already come in. And the churches there, if you go back and read that, maybe sometime we'll go through it. They were in the flesh. They were in sin. They were in, in, in um, a place of walking away from the Lord. Some of them were dead. Some of them were lukewarm. The same way the churches today is what you see in the church, seven churches of Asia in the year AD, the year 95. I mean, it's shocking. And it's the same thing today. And when you read there and you, and you read concerning these judgments that God announced over those seven churches, well, six of them, seven, six churches. It's severe. It's severe stuff, people. It's real. And so um, having said all this, yes, I know what we do is crazy. Yes, I know the time is short. Yes, I know these warnings are real. We talk about the warnings and we talked about this, uh, all the warnings this last few months. You can, you can take those seven churches, Revelation 2 and 3, those two chapters, and you can make a whole teaching on warnings. Just on those two chapters. Aren't you glad I didn't do that? Well, you know, the Lord said it's enough for now. So we move on from there. We do not move away from there. We move on from there. We still keep before our eyes and in our spirit the reality of the warnings of the judgment fire that is coming to the church. We don't ever forget. If you forget about that, God help you. God help you. Even if you are remnant and you're in the right place, you've got to be prepared for what is coming soon. The judgment fire of God will soon hit the church. Even if you are remnant and it's not going to hit you and hurt you, you've got to know, you've got to mentally prepare for that. You're going to be shocked with what you see. This is not going to be some sweet Sunday morning half dead service. This is going to be fearsome and, 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 and terrible, horrible, horrible. But like I say, that's the part of God in the church that we ignore. You know, God's only nice and always smile at you. And I began to tell people, I would, I would feel that sometimes even when I sit here prepared during the week and I get up on Sunday and I'm just happy and smiling, the next thing, the Lord's anger would rise up in me. And you, you saw that come through me. Oh my God, the anger that he has. And right now, Jesus, Paul, uh, uh, John talks about the Lord who has fire in his eyes. He is a Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, who has fire in his eyes, looking at his church. And these things are coming. But here is the great news. The Lord has always had a remnant, a special people, special because they chose to be special. We are all called in the church. Every person that is born again is in the kingdom of God. We are God's people. And as God's people, the Lord wants every born again, truly born again Christian to have the opportunity to become part of his special remnant in this final hour. The remnant church is the church that says, I choose the Lord no matter what, I'll change. I'll move here. I'll move there. I'll do whatever it takes. I'll have the hunger. I'll have the Lord minister to me. I will fellowship with the Lord. I will pursue the Lord. I will seek after the Lord. I will do whatever it takes for me to be on the cutting edge of what God is doing, to walk with God's spirit and to be part of what the Lord is bringing, to be part of this whole end time plan and to be at the forefront of God sending the church to the nations to bring in the end time harvest. Now, I'm going to mention three things about what it is required, what is the absolute emergency requirement, if you would. Because now a lot of people have watched these broadcasts with us, but they've done nothing. And you're going to start realizing when the fire of God starts coming here that, oh, my God, I'm not part of the remnant. This is really last call. We don't know that we would talk about this again. But the Lord said to me, there is a shortcut to become remnant at this time because we run out of time. And so many of you and many people can still become remnant. They may not have received all the teaching. They may not have the training. They may not be prepared and raised up in their spirit and, and matured in their spirit and be ready to run when the fire of God, when the fire revival hits, but you can still get in the door. This is like getting in the door type message today. This is like last call, last minute. You know, you're like you, you're in the water and you're you're sinking, and the boat is the boat of the remnant of the remnant, and you can get on the boat. You can get in. You can stay in the sea. Remember, prophetically, the sea is the masses of the people. You can remain in the sea, struggling. To keep your head above water, the sea of the church. You can remain 
in the sea of the church, the born again church, struggling, half dead, miserable, uh, living in antichrist Christianity, or you can grab the rope. We're throwing you a rope today. This is a rope to say, listen, it's last minute. We know the fire of God is on its way in. But if you have not acted on all that we've preached about the remnant, about true Christianity, about Holy Spirit, about leaving the old system, about coming over into true Christianity, about beginning to fellowship with Holy Spirit, about following the Lord, spending time with Him. If you have not acted on this even for the last two years or so that we have spent so much time in raising up the remnant as the Lord had told us to do. If you had not acted on this, it is time to act now. This is last call. Next week, we move on to other things. We will continue to do what I now call last minute training for the remnant. Hallelujah. We'll continue until the fire falls. And soon we'll be back on the road again and things will begin to change. Now, this is last minute call. Imagine now we're in the boat. The boat is full of the remnant. It's a nice big boat and there's room for plenty. Hallelujah. And we're standing there, we have the rope and we're casting this rope out into the sea of the abundance of the born again church. And we say, grab that rope, say yes to it, grab that rope, hold on to it and we'll pull you aboard. We'll pull, this is last minute. We'll pull you aboard onto the remnant boat of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Say yes. Grab this. So if you want to grab this rope today, maybe you're watching us for the first time. Maybe you say this is crazy. So many people have come across us and the broadcast and then they, they, they contact the ministry and they get the books and they're blown away. So, oh, my God, I've had people one time from England call us and say, we, we've been we've been dreaming about hearing what you preach. One lady said, we've been dreaming. She said, I've had dreams about what you're preaching. And I would wake up in the morning and say, but God, I know that I had a dream from you last night, but this cannot be true, can it? It just sounds too good to be true. And you see, the deception has been so thick and has lasted so long for almost 2000 years. It's just amazing. And people are hungry, don't even know it. So we're, we're showing in the rope and we're throwing it out in the water. We have more than one. We have more people on the boat that is casting a rope in the water. If you would grab it, we'll pull you in and you become part of God's remnant. Oh, my God, it's so important. So in this last week, the Lord said to me, uh, you know, tell people what needs to be done. This is last minute. As I've just said a moment ago, it's not going to be possible to bring you through all the teaching that we've that we've done the last two years that some of you people have walked through and have changed from Antichrist Christ Christianity to true Christianity and to Holy Spirit. But we can get you on board. Hallelujah. We get you out of the water, out of the sea of the masses of the born again, deceived church into the church of enlightenment. Hallelujah. And those who say, yes, I don't care what I have to do, what, whatever has to change. I want to be and I will be part of God's remnant army that will take over the world in these last days. Hallelujah. And so three things, you know, I, I had a list of about 10 things. The Lord said to me, no, we've got to narrow this down. Just show them, just give them the emergency kit, so to speak. You get on board and you do this real quickly. So, you know, we'll pull you on board. Hallelujah. And so three things that the Lord concluded with me this week that are so important. And I'm going to mention them briefly. I'm not going to make a long teaching of it, but this is what is required. It's time for action for those who have heard all the teachings of how to become or what the remnant army is, what the end time revival or revolution is about, what is about to take place, what is it to mean, what does it mean to change from Antichrist Christianity to true Christianity and Holy Spirit, all those things. There are three things. Number one, number one, we need, everyone needs, and everyone especially who has not made the choice to join the remnant army of the Lord of the last day church, you need from the Lord, and hunger of urgency. That's what he said to me. And hunger of urgency. Again, I want to show you this. Chapter 10 of this book, God's Gold and Glory Revolution. We talk about specifically several chapters in this book, actually. Do we talk about spiritual hunger and how important that is? But in chapter 10, we elaborate on this and, and go into that in great detail. Then two Christian living haven't helped us up today yet. This talks about how to live the Christian lifestyle once you've moved into true Christianity and you have received and have started a walk and relationship with a person of Holy Spirit. But pages 60 to 65, those five pages, true Christian living. 
Those five pages, we lay it out. I even looked at it today. Clearly show you exactly how to get spiritual hunger from the Lord. I'm not going to teach on that today. But how? Because spiritual hunger has got to come from somewhere. It's not like the hunger in your stomach. It doesn't just develop because you haven't eaten. It's the opposite, actually. Spiritual hunger, the more you eat, the more you receive of God, the hungrier you become. It's the actually, actually the exact opposite of how natural hunger works. Natural hunger, the longer you, you don't eat, the more time goes by that you don't eat, the hungrier you become. Spiritual hunger is the opposite. The more you partake of the Lord, fellowship with Holy Spirit, receive the truth, walk in the presence of the Lord, spend time with Him, the more you do that, the hungrier yet and still you become. Hungrier and hungrier and more so. Continually, all the time, increasingly, progressively, all the time. Hallelujah. But how does it start? Where do I, where do I start when I'm, when I'm nowhere? And I, I thought about this today and I thought this is a good analogy. Thinking about somebody who's in a very small a boat, a sailboat, but a very small one. And you can actually, you can row when there's no wind because it's a small boat. But you know, you got, you set sail, it's ready for the wind, but you just got to start. The wind is not there. So you just got to start by yourself. Just start rowing. Just start rowing and you keep rowing for a while. Just keep working it. And then the wind will come and take your little sailboat across the water. It's like this with spiritual hunger. You have to start somewhere. You have to say to yourself and look up the scriptures. People, grab the concordance. Look it up. Take the book, Your True Christian Living or, or God's Golden Glory Revolution and look at spiritual hunger. We use scriptures, give you scriptures there. And you'll see it's one of the, uh, one of the uh, spiritual attributes that is so magnified throughout the Word of God. Spiritual hunger, spiritual hunger. Nothing really happens in your life but that you are in possession of enough spiritual hunger for all you need and desire. Spiritual hunger is the number one spiritual force of the kingdom of God and of the born again human spirit. Faith is great. Hunger is awesome. Faith is very good. Hunger is the best. Faith touches the promises of God and faith receives from the hand of God. But hunger touches the heart of God. It's so, so different. It's so different. And you see, here's another thing that the Antichrist church system has never taught you. It's always, well, if you have a need or if you need a strong promise to back up your prayer and so on, because you have, everything is always need, 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 need. Yes, we have needs, but there's something greater than need. It's called desire. Desire is hunger. See, the Lord says he'll fulfill the desires. You delight yourself in him. In Psalm 37, 5. You delight yourself in the Lord. You spend time with, him, with the Lord. You walk in the presence of the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. I have preached this for years. I've seen it in the word. I've seen it in my life. I've seen it in people's lives. When they pursue, when we pursue God with hunger, we have all our needs met and we receive the desires of our heart progressively as we walk with him. Not all in one day or one year, but it comes to pass. He will give you the desires of your heart when you walk with him through hunger and thirst. Hunger and thirst, spiritual hunger and thirst. Those are the strongest forces or, or even force, even one thing that, that is available to the born again Christian. Why? Because it is the essence of. Of, 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 of what we made of, what we made of. It is the number one reason why God created you, that you would desire him. And Christians desire everything you can think of, but God personally. They desire the things of the world. They desire wealth. They desire fame. They desire power. They desire control. They desire this ministry. They desire that ministry. They desire this job or whatever. And they desire... Um, uh, the blessings of God and the covenant promises and blessing of God, but they don't desire God himself. That's why the church has never focused on Holy Spirit, because there's never been desire for the Lord himself. That comes out of hunger. You will recall, some of you, how much we preach, not just myself, but all the people running with the joy revival in the 90s and early 2000s, how much we preach and, and, and major on the essence of, the importance of, Spiritual hunger, spiritual thirst, 
because it is the number one thing that releases the hand of God to you. And what you should do is take those portions in those books, work through them, take those scriptures about spiritual hunger, work through them and say, Lord, make this a reality to me in my spirit. Make this a reality to me in my mind. Let me see how important it is. How important it is that I desire you, that I hunger for you, not for a word, not for a scripture, not for a song, not for a sermon, not for a teaching, that I hunger for you, you, Y O you, you. And there's only one person of God is on the earth and that is Holy Spirit who lives in you. But when you ask for hunger, and I explain it here in the in True Christian Living as well. When you ask for hunger, there's so much that's involved here. Ask him for hunger for your spirit and ask him for hunger for your soul, your, your natural man, the soul man. Hunger for him in your soul and hunger for him in your body. The touch, the anointing, the presence of God in your body. Ask him, and I explain it there, to impart hunger to you in every part of you, your spirit, man, your soul, and your body. And this is like people, once you start, once you realize how important it is to do it, you're going to start rowing. You're going to start rowing without any wind yet, but you're going to start rowing your sailboat and you're going to start rowing and rowing. What, what, what does that mean? You're going to start saying, Lord, I'm asking you for hunger. I'm asking you for the thirst. Even in the book, The Golden Glory, chapter 10, we deal with that in, in great detail. Lord, Lord, in Jesus' name, I thank you. Spend the time with him. Sit in anointed music if you have it. Sit in the presence of the Lord. Talk to him. Ask him. So you've got to reach out to him and say, Lord, create in me. You know, David said in the Old Testament, Lord, create in me a clean heart. Create in me. Galatians 4.19, Paul says, the things of, of Christ will be created, will be formed in our spirits. Colossians 3.8, the same thing. He'll form the things of God in you. Ask the Lord to form in you, starting with your spirit, and then your soul, and then your body. Ask Him to form, to download, to impart, to create within you a true spiritual hunger in your spirit, and in your soul, and in your body. Because and now it's urgency. The time is up. It's gone. The fire is on its way in. It's a hunger of urgency. It's more than just a hunger. Because even if you are mentioning three things now that are really very, very important for people to join the remnant, for Christians to join the remnant army. But I hear the Lord say, even if for some reason you don't quite get to two and three, one alone, if you develop a strong hunger for God in your spirit and in your mind, in your soul and in your body, I'm telling you, you'll still make it into the remnant. The next two things I'm going to mention that I'm going to close, they're also important. They're also very important, but I'm telling you right now, I just hear the Spirit of God say this in me. If you truly pursue the Lord, somebody say, well, give me a word, you know, prophesy to me. Okay, here. Yea, thus saith the Lord unto thee. Yea, my precious dumplings. Yea, I saith unto thee. No, that's not prophecy. That's religious hogwash and antichrist crap. Here's the prophecy. Here's the prophetic word. I hear the Lord say in my spirit, if you would reach out to him. You have to reach out to him. Holy Spirit, not Jesus is in heaven, not Father is in heaven. If you say Holy Spirit of God who lives in my spirit, if you are truly born again, you can say that and you should say that and you must say that. Holy Spirit of God who lives in my spirit. I'm asking you, precious Lord, to create a new or fresh hunger and, 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 and hunger of urgency in my spirit. Let me receive the urgency as well as the hunger, blend them together into one. Let it be a hunger of a true urgency, excitement and joy, but urgency at the same time. I receive, Lord, from you a new, a fresh hunger. Create in my spirit a hunger of true urgency because of the time and the season that we are living in. Lord, I thank you for creating this in my spirit. And then, Lord, would you move on into my soul and my emotions and my mind, and would you create the same hunger of urgency, but the greatness of the hunger of God in my soul, man, in my body, my, my, my body would cry out for your presence. Uh, like uh, uh, David was says, my heart, my soul, uh, cry out for, cry out for the living God. Cry out for the living God. That I would begin to cry out for your presence, Lord. And people say to me, you know, what's the number one thing you pray over yourself? Well, I don't pray over myself, but I speak over myself and I speak on a regular basis. People say, well, don't you get tired of it? No, because it gets better all the time. 
And I keep saying to the Lord all the time, Lord, I need more hunger in my spirit. I need more, more hunger in my soul, more hunger in my body. And I remember the things of God are added to you progressively. That means through time. That's why I never get tired of doing that. And just saying, Lord, and, and sometimes, you know, I wait until I'm in the presence of the Lord or I fellowship with the Lord, and then I do it even stronger. Lord, I need more hunger and thirst in my spirit. I need more hunger and thirst in my emotions, in my soul, in my mind. I need more hunger and thirst in my body uh, to yearn for your presence more and more and more and more. Hallelujah. That brings me to point two. Ask the Lord for that fresh touch. There must be a fresh touch and a fresh response to Holy Spirit. Many Christians have put that off. They always put that off. They don't know why. Ask the Lord for a fresh touch and a fresh response to Holy Spirit. Lord, I need a fresh touch, fresh anointing from you on my, in my spirit, on my soul, in my soul, and in my body. And I tell you what, when the Lord pours a freshness within you, then you will respond, and then you need to respond. This is a touch with response. Response, receive it and thank him and then talk to him. Start talking to him. Sometimes the easiest thing to do to start relationship with Holy Spirit, don't think about it, just start talking, just start sharing your heart. Like he said to me in that hotel room in, in um, 1979 in Sydney, Australia, whatever it is, the, the, whatever you're mad, sad, bad or glad, just talk to me and we'll talk through it and we'll walk through. It. We'll be friends. We'll be we'll be true friends. You know, nowadays it's hard to find friends. You know, you go on TV watching your friends. No, they're not your friends. You you think people about on Facebook and so they're not your friends. I have what two thousand people, whatever, on Facebook, and I don't even know hardly any of them. Many of them know me. They don't call me. They don't talk to me. By the way, please don't contact me on Facebook. I get so many people every day say, "How are you doing? How's the weather where you are?" I can't. What would I do if I sit there and talk junk with everybody on Facebook all day long? I mean, I know you can talk good things. I don't have time to do so. I spend time ministering to the Lord, ministering to people and running. Hallelujah. Because we're running a ship. Hallelujah. Our ship is called Remnant. We're running a ship. I'm, I'm a ship captain. Our ship is on the water. The water of what? The, the sea, the ocean of the church. Of the multiple, multiple, multiple millions of born again Christians. And we say, hey, hey, it's time to get out of that water. Get in the boat. Hallelujah. So contact me at GabrielHamans.com. That's our website. Go visit our website. There's so many things on there. Beautiful, beautiful, awesome things. And go on uh, YouTube and subscribe and you'll get all of me that we post and everything. And the same on Facebook and so on. Hallelujah. So number two, a fresh touch from the Lord with response. Do not allow the Lord to touch you and not respond to him. That response can start a whole new relationship with Holy Spirit. And for many Christians who don't have no personal relationship with Holy Spirit, ask him for the touch, just like a jump start, you know, jump start me, Lord, pour your anointing in my spirit, pour a fresh anointing in my soul. Pour a fresh anointing to my body. Help me that I can just rise up and I'll begin to respond to you. And it can be the beginning of a true relationship with Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Finally, number three, urgently seek truth. Urgently or be urgently seeking truth. What truth are you talking about? All the truth. Because there's hardly any truth in the church. How do you seek truth? You seek number one from Holy Spirit. And number two, you go out there and seek. Open your Bible, open these books, begin to read and say, Holy Spirit, I thank you that even as I inquire, as I look, even with my mind, as I look and read through this, that you will help me. Ask him directly and then go. Don't go and read some books that talk about junk and things that can't help you. These books will help you. The truth is in them. The truth is in the New Testament. Hallelujah. It's so, so important. I want to read you just a portion of scripture about hunger. And then I'm going to close. Hallelujah. You know, we say, we say, what is at stake here? I'm going to talk about that next week. What is, in, what is in store for the remnant in these last days? This morning I was looking at it. It's so awesome. I just sat there. I said, oh my God, my God. I know it, but just to see it again is so amazing. So awesome. Thank you, Lord. Where he says in the book of Revelation there to one of the churches, I forgot now which one it was. He said, if you do this, if you do that, I will give you power over the nations. I will give you power over the nations. What is he talking about? I'm going to mention this and come back to this next week and talk about this some more next week in detail. 
We are about to rise in the power and the glory of the Lord and His fire. And we have a short period of time, seven years or less. We don't even know how God's going to do this because we're already into the final seven years. But we're bringing billions of people into the kingdom of God as the Spirit of God is poured out, the fire of God is poured out on every human being on earth. This is the last day end time harvest. We talked about that a lot. The Lord will give us power over the nations. The remnant is that part of God's end time army. The remnant is the first part of God's end time army. The remnant is the part of the church that will pass through the fire of judgment and not be burned. That will pass through the fire of change and the fire of transformation and the fire of cleansing and purification and be completely purified in every cell in your body before the rest of the church. The remnant church will first walk through the glory. The remnant church will first be dispatched by the Lord to go out into the nations with gold and glory in abundance. Absolutely the fullness of the glory of the Lord, the fullness of all the wealth of the earth and of heaven. And we will be an unstoppable force and have power over the nations of the world to bring in this end time harvest. A power that has never been released and will not be released until the glory of God has gone through us after the fire of God has gone through us. We'll talk about that some more next week. He'll give us power over the nations for the end time harvest, but also... Also, during the thousand year millennial reign, millennial reign of Jesus, when we reign with him over the nations, he will give us power over the nations. And again, the power that you would have would be for the remnant church. Those who become the remnant church would have great power during the time of the, of the harvest now at the end of dispensation seven here, but would also have great power over the nations of the world during the thousand year millennial reign. And there's much more to that. We'll talk about that. Let me talk about this. Real quickly, I'm going to close with this. I'm going to read from the Passion Translation. And I'm going to read in Philippians chapter 3. And I'm going to read verses 9 through 115. No, I'm kidding. Verses 9 through 16. Now listen to what Paul is saying here. He says this. He says, My passion is, my passion is to be consumed with Him, with the Lord. And not to cling to my own righteousness based on keeping with the law, but rather the righteousness which is his based on the faithfulness of Jesus Christ, the very righteousness that comes from God. And I continually long to know the wonders of Jesus and to experience the overflowing power of his resurrection Working in me. Wow. Is the resurrection power of God working in us? Is it working in you? Paul says it is working in me. I want to continue to experience it more and have the power of the resurrection of Christ working in me. Of course, by Holy Spirit. Now, I will be one with him in his sufferings. And become like him in his death. Only then will I be able to experience complete oneness with him. That's in spirit because in person he's at the right hand of the father. Hello? But you are seated with him. He's talking about spiritual things here. Oneness with him in his resurrection from the realm of the death. I admit that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I'm pursuing. But I run with passion. There's that word again. What is passion? It is hunger and thirst and desire and yearning for God. Burning in your spirit, burning in your soul and burning in your body. This is what makes the difference. This is really what makes the difference between the remnant church and the rest of the church. And like the Lord just said here, as I, be, as I began with all of these three points, these three points that I mentioned to you are very important for you to become remnant. If for some reason or another, you don't get to two and three, if you really develop a strong and very passionate hunger for God, you'll get in. I admit that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I'm pursuing, but I run with passion into his abundance so that I may reach the purpose. Glory to God, there's destiny. That I may reach the purpose. What is our purpose? The destiny of these last days. That I may reach the purpose for which Christ Jesus had 
laid hold of for me. Oh, I just love it. Hallelujah. To make me his own. Hallelujah. I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. No. However, I do have one compelling focus. I forget all that is in the past. And as I fasten my heart to the future, instead, I fasten, I, I tie my heart to the future. Here's the future. It's around the corner. It's the end time golden glory revolution. I fasten my heart. This is my purpose. Our purpose now. Paul talks about in his purpose. He says that I may attain. That I may reach. Really what it says in the Greek. That I may attain to the resurrection. What it really means is that I may reach the end of the road. It's like a journey. That I may attain. That I may arrive. Expect the Greek word is that I may arrive at the resurrection of the dead in Christ. Well, that's awesome. Hallelujah. Don't you love it? That I may arrive. Hallelujah. At the resurrection. He knew by this time that he's going to go home. And he was looking towards running with the Lord as hard and fast as he could because he wanted to make sure. Hallelujah. That he will arrive at the resurrection of the dead when Jesus comes back down from heaven. He'll come back and get a new body. Hallelujah. I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future. Instead, I run straight. I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize. I don't want to just get to heaven and eternity. I want to gain the victory prize. I don't want to just get a good price, you know, coming somewhere 10, 15, 20, 50, 100 down. I want to get the victory prize. What is going to make the difference between going to heaven and receiving the victory prize? Passion, hunger, thirst, desire, yearning, Cry of God in your heart. Hallelujah. Hungry for God. That's the difference. That's always the difference. That will always be the difference until we get to eternity. So I let all who are fully mature have the same. Let all of you who have this, that are fully mature, have the same passion. Have the same passion. Have the same passion. Let all of you have the same passion. Let all of you are fully mature. We don't, sorry, Paul, we never followed your teaching, so the church is not fully mature. We're on our way there. Hallelujah. The remnant is at least. Have the same passion. And if anyone is not yet gripped, gripped, gripped by these desires, God will reveal it to them. And let us all advance together to reach the victory prize following, following one path with one passion. There it is again. Glory to God. Oh my hallelujah. That's a people that has always made the difference. Always throughout the ages, 6,000 years of man being on the earth. The difference has always been fire, passion, hunger, thirst, desire, yearning, the cry of God in your spirit. And it can be in your soul, can be in your body. But you have to have it. Hallelujah. You have to have it. It's always been about appetite. Staying alive in the earth and be healthy and continue to live. It depends on appetite. You've got to eat enough. You've got to sleep well. You've got to do this. You've got to... It's always about appetite. It comes from the spirit world where everything is about appetite. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, after the Lord, after his presence. I mean, I might come back and just read this again next week. It is awesome, isn't it? I love the Passion Translation here. They really have all the passion in there too. Paul says, I have this desire. He said, I want to arrive at the full resurrection of the dead. I'm on my journey there. While I'm on this earth now, here in these, those were the last days of Paul on the earth. He said, I'm, I'm running all the way now. I'm forgetting everything that's behind me, putting all the stuff behind me, everything behind me, behind me, and lay it down, leave it there. I'm running uh, down the road. I'm going forward. I'm moving on. I'm pressing towards the price of the high calling in Christ Jesus, the victory crown, he calls it here. And, and the way I'm going to get there is with working with and running with and, and working with my passion. That's how I'm going to get there. That's what's going to make the difference. Always make the difference. That is what will make the difference between who will in this final hour answer the last call for the remnant. Soon the fire is here. The time is over. But there's still opportunity. There's still opportunity at this time. Doesn't matter how few people, few people hear me, how few people will act on this. I have got to always preach and say by the Spirit of God what Holy Spirit tells me to preach and say. And I always will. Hallelujah. No matter who likes it or not, who listens to, who acts on or not, doesn't matter if it's one person. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. If it's two, if it's ten, hallelujah. But eventually, there will be an army of the Lord will be raised up and it will go through this country and reap the harvest, almost like pl plundering a field. Hallelujah. We see that in Joel chapter 2. The army of the Lord will come forth in these last days. And it will start with a remnant. It will begin with a remnant. The remnant of the hungry that say, I will change. I will hate everything that's not of God. I hate all of the, the doctrines, all of the religious stuff, even the traditions. Let me tell you this. When you get to the place where you begin to hate the traditions of the church, you have been touched by God. You've got a hunger. You have changed. Something has happened in you because everybody in the church, they worship all of their traditions and all of their traditional stuff because we grew up with it from the time we were young, one year old and two years old. We have all these traditions and this is what we do and this is how we celebrate all the Christian stuff and not all of it is pagan and ungodly and it was sold to us by the devil and we love it because the family is there and everybody's there and we do all the stuff together but it is of the devil. It is of the Antichrist system we need to have our eyes open to it because we talk about it, all of it in here. But the moment you say, I hate everything that is not Holy Spirit and New Testament and have not been paid for by the Lord Jesus Christ and has not been brought into the church by God's Spirit. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. The moment you get there, you have developed some hunger. You have developed some hunger. You have developed some spiritual hunger. When you get to the place where you say, I don't care what it takes. I will change. I will do whatever you tell me, Lord. Let Holy Spirit tell you. Many people call me and say, well, you know, so I leave my church. I'm not Holy Spirit. You need to ask Holy Spirit what to do, where to go, to go to church, not to go to church, whatever. That's between you and Holy Spirit. I'm not the Lord. I'm not the judge. I'm the, the vessel. I'm the minister. I'll bring you the truth that's going to bring you to ask very confronting questions of Holy Spirit that you have to and even confront yourself in the mirror. But the time is short and I'm going to go. Hallelujah. Are you blessed today? Yeah, this is our shock and awe broadcast. This shock and awe again today. The call is going out again. There's still time, little time. One more time, the Lord said to me. Next week, I'm going to talk about what is in store for the remnant. What are the rewards that we're going to get now in eternity is amazing. But the call is this. Have you acted on, even those that have watched us all these months, have you acted on the truth? Have you made the choice? Have you sought the Lord and the hunger? Have you sought breakthrough with Holy Spirit? Have you changed from Antichrist Christianity to true Christianity? But these three things, a hunger of urgency, a fresh touch from the Lord, ask Him for it, spend time with Him, and He will come. At His own time, He'll come. And then walk with Holy Spirit. And number three, seek, urgently seek the truth. Ask Holy Spirit, grab the New Testament, grab the books, and say, Lord, Help me. Speak to me by your spirit and speak to me through the word of God and through these books. Seek the truth that you may walk in the freedom and the liberty of the truth. And thus being the true remnant of the Lord, prepared for the soon outpouring of the fire and the raising up of God's end time army. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Be part of our ministry. Please be part of the ministry. Pray for us. Support the ministry. Nobody's doing what we're doing. It is very, very important, very urgent what we're doing right now and will be until we come into the fullness of God's army and the outpouring of the Spirit and fire. Hallelujah. It's a very critical time still. Be part of this ministry and support us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We challenge you. We ask you. And so we bless you in Jesus' name and hope to see you next week. Tell others about this broadcast. People, you are going to be held accountable. You can't talk to anybody. You shouldn't just grab everybody on the street. But people that you know that need to hear what we preach, Christians, the Lord will lead you. Ask Him to lead you. Become available to the Spirit of God to be used. Even if you just tell them, there's amazing things I'm hearing about the Lord changing my life. Refer them to this. Give them some of the books to look at. The time is of great urgency in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you. We'll see you next Sunday. God bless you. Thank you so much for watching today.